We have, in the past, covered numerous, seemingly impossible ancient feats of ancient engineering found throughout modern-day Japan. Polygonal stonework of gigantic proportions, ancient forts and temples, which we have previously distinguished, were constructed upon far older and now inexplicably mysterious masonry techniques, the most abundant of which we have come to know as polygonal. Yet, alas, due to the explanation as to how this was achieved remains elusive, thus the site is dismissed and deliberately overlooked. As such, the absence of any logical explanation as to how said sites came into being, or even how this stonework was once achieved, means that not only are these sites suppressed from mainstream attention, but the seemingly impossible features still in existence are instead of being exposed and admitted as unexplainable accomplishments, thus allowing those with a critical capacity to pursue said origins, we feel, are instead avoided, compelling proofs of our posit of their having once been advanced, now yet lost civilizations, which once flourished and often seemingly suddenly vanished, have indeed been and gone on our planet. The suppression of this truth gives motive to academia who attempt to cover up such realities. Yet, regardless of the defining purpose for this conspiracy, whether to avoid mass panic or not, we feel, it is not a valid enough excuse for this suppression, and in our opinion, we feel, regardless of public reaction, we all deserve to be presented with the true reality of these ancient sites, and indeed, a true account of our history. Tucked away within rural Japan is a megalith known as Ichi no Hoden. At first glance, this particular megalith looks as though it is floating in mid-air. The reason for this is due to the civilization's abrupt departure. As such, the stone has not been completely liberated from the bedrock it is still attached to. Clearly, at the final stage of excavation, the stone is literally hanging by a thread. And due to the location of the excavation, and the fact that the stone itself has protected its base from erosion, the megalith has remained attached to this small seam of rock for untold millennia. The defining reason for why we attribute the stone to a now lost civilization is its sheer size, measuring an impressive 5.7 by 6.4 by 7.2 meters. The stone also weighs an estimated 500 tons, meaning that the techniques, or indeed the technology used to cut and transport the stone, remains an unexplainable feat of ancient engineering. Largely dismissed by academics the world over, these gigantic stones, however, are a legacy that due to their immense size, is likely to still be present here on our planet, far after our own civilization has been and gone. Additionally, just like the many other sites which we have successfully identified within Japan, as the work of a now lost civilization, a temple was later built at the site, and although attributed to a civilization within permitted timelines, the megalith has been believed to be holy and has been venerated since ancient times. According to mainstream study, which although not publicized, were literally forced upon academic institutions as they continue to attempt to appear transparent all the while actively avoiding the task of explaining not only who and when this stone was cut by, but how this ancient civilization was intended to transport said stones to their final locations. The official version is, predictably, a claim that the rock was intended to be a tomb. However, just as we would have expected, there is no scientific information as to who quarried the stone, or indeed what intentions they had for its eventual purpose. Who cut the Ishinohoden megalith? How did ancient civilizations move such gigantic stones, sometimes thousands of miles? We find the Ishinohoden megalith highly compelling. We have, in the past, explored some truly remarkable ancient ruins that can be found within Russia. Some of the largest blocks to be found anywhere on Earth can be found within this enormous country along with many other intriguing and spectacular finds still left to be publicly documented, most notably within the notoriously hostile and extremely eerie Ural mountain range. 
a place long rumored to be the home of the elusive snow yeti. Left abandoned for untold millennia, laying within a Siberian lake far from modern civilization, rests one of the most scientifically baffling sites to be found anywhere on planet Earth. Claimed to be only a mere 1300 years old, yet any compelling evidence to back up such predictable claims by certain bodies within historical academia are not forthcoming. Additionally, they harvest no real logical explanation for the site's clear antiquity, reason for abandonment, or indeed construction. It seems with very little to go on, certain groups within constrictive learning practices would like the world to believe that this perplexing site was built a mere 1,000 or so years ago. Known as Por Bajin, it is a 3.5-hectare artificial man-made island located in a remote, unnamed Siberian lake between the Sayan and Altair Ranges, about 3,800 kilometers from Moscow near the Mongolian border. The site was first discovered in 1891, and the purpose of the island has still not been explained over a century later. It is still a mystery for, quote, experts to explain although they still strongly insist it was constructed no more than 1,400 years ago. An in-depth archaeological exploration took place in 2007, with archaeologists discovering clay tablets of human feet and faded colored drawings on the plaster. These were subsequently used to date the site to quite recently within antiquity, allowing experts to say that the island was built during the period of the Uyghur Khaganate between 744 and 840 AD. However, they severely lack any clear explanation as to what their motives would have been for constructing such a fortress, in such a solitary place so far from trading routes, their own civilization, or indeed anything else of interest. As with many other confusing and as yet unexplained ruins around the world, the archaeological strata most prefer to academia's currently upheld story, in regard to chronological events, will always be preferred, and the controversial and often strong evidential datings are ignored or destroyed. Is Por Bajin a far older and once far more advanced site than we are led to believe? With the advances in technology allowing us to venture further and further into the wilderness, it is only a matter of time before a self-funded, inquisitively-minded individual gets a chance to take a really good look at this amazing place. Our last video covered the astonishing ancient city found in Sri Lanka, which was somehow built atop an enormous rock formation. Known as Lion's Rock, it is a testament to the ancient's capabilities and determination and our next location is just as incredible. Known as Nan Madal, it is an ancient site located within the middle of an ocean near to the Mariana Trench. What makes Nan Madal so incredible is the fact that the entire city was once built upon the water. An entire series of artificial islands, canals, and fortified city limits. What's more, the entire location is built entirely from enormous blocks of basalt and coral. Built using a unique set of sophisticated techniques, not found anywhere else on Earth. The site's supposed original name was Saun Nan Lang, or Reef of Heaven, and according to Gene Ashby, in his book Pompeii, an Island Argosy, the ruined city is one of today's greatest archaeological enigmas, and is sometimes actually called Atlantis, or the Eighth Wonder of the World, or even the Venice of the Pacific. According to academia, Nan Madal was the ceremonial and political seat of the Saudalur dynasty, which unites the islands of Pompeii's estimated 25,000 people until as recently as 1628. Set apart between the main island of Pompeii and Tenwen Island, it was a scene of human activity as early as the 1st or 2nd century AD, with the perplexing megalithic architecture apparent only beginning in 1200 AD. However, comprising of almost 100 stone and coral-built platforms atop artificial islands separated by narrow channels, enclosed by an outer seawall, 
Nan Madal is an engineering marvel. A truly mammoth undertaking that, yet despite the enormity of the undertaking at such a distant time within history, there exists no records as to when, or most importantly how, Nan Madal was ever built. Additionally, there is no evidence of any quarries on any of the nearby islands or indeed the reefs surrounding the site. Where did these enormous rocks come from? How were they transported there? And how, or indeed why, was the site constructed on top of the reef? For a technologically primitive people, apparently placed a mere 1500 years in the past, to somehow have created this entire artificial floating city, made from enormous pieces of coral and basalt foundation, using techniques apparently not known prior to construction, yet somehow successfully constructing buildings that have lasted well over millennia, seems a rather ridiculous and extremely unlikely premise. Additionally, to have no evidence of a quarry anywhere to be found makes the whole complex that much more confusing. The total area of the enclosure is around 75 hectares. Walls were as high as 15 meters and up to 5 meters thick. The average weight of each stone is 5 tons, with some weighing as much as 50 tons. With an estimated total weight of columnar basalt making up the city's construction at around 750,000 metric tons, Nan Madal is undoubtedly an astonishing place. There are many theories which orbit the Apollo space missions. However, apart from the obvious moon hoax claims, there are many other baffling tales surrounding these missions. Surrounding not only a proof to the validity of the programs, but also a seemingly transparent approach to presumably many, although we would never believe all, of the anomalies that the American Space Agency encountered during those incredibly expensive yet highly successful missions. Watched by nearly everyone spinning around on our small globe. One very few lucky enough to travel away from like to call the blue marble. There are many unexplained images that have been snapped of the moon by NASA. Some claimed as showing nothing like that of the famous pyramid we have covered in the past, seemingly rediscovered on an image once claimed by NASA as an overexposed image. Yet there are many other anomalies and objects NASA neither confirm nor deny the existence of yet still release said images to the world. They do not deny and equally accept that many they cannot explain. The Shard This image is a 44-time enlargement of a lunar orbiter frame coded LO384M, taken with a medium-resolution camera at a distance of at least 250 miles. It shows an object dubbed by Richard Hoagland as the Shard. Interestingly, Although some have dismissed the object as a simple camera malfunction, the shard also possesses a shadow correctly aligned with the position of Saul at that time. According to Hoagland, quote, Poor resolution images, like this one of the shard, have led some to conclude it is an ephemeral outgassing event. However, the Enterprise mission enhancements reveal no spray or splatter, which would be consistent with such a conclusion. He goes on to state, the object appears to be solid, though badly battered by meteors." End quote. Above and behind the shard is the tower, another among this collection of mystifying images of apparent lunar objects. The tower has been researched and studied by many people since its discovery among NASA's images. A massive structure, calculated as being an incredible 7 miles high, this estimation clearly makes any consideration that the tower is indeed a real structural anomaly, soaring from the lunar surface a tough pill to swallow. Yet the images remain an incredibly difficult thing to explain, and the tower's cuboid feature atop just adds to this ongoing mystery, yet one of deep intrigue, is the mystery of Castle. The name given to an object captured by the Apollo 10 astronauts during the Moon orbit mission codenamed AS-10-32-4822. It is of a one-mile-long object floating miles above the lunar surface, like a satellite to our satellite, that, even more amazingly, is possibly like that of what makes Saturn's rings, 
that being ice crystals of pure water, is apparently, according to future enhanced image study, also made from a material alike glittering glass. Apart from the reports of strange music being heard on the far side of the moon, a claim few will ever be able to confirm the truth of, this extraordinary object is something very few know of, and even less have studied. Unless more attention is given to such incredible anomalies, ones witnessed by us already, and so relatively close to our little home, we may never know what they are. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. There exists a smorgasbord of imaginative theories pertaining to the original construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Egypt's Giza Plateau being the melting pot and often the site of initiation for many an astute researcher. A realization of not only the megalithic anomalies, but also the academic ignorance. As we have previously mentioned, a discovery first shared here upon our channel, enormous granite stones exposed on the east side of Cheops. has not only revealed the size of the original blocks, but the extensive erosion upon them. This fact is a highly controversial piece of evidence. The stones, which are clearly more modern casing stones, conceal what were already highly eroded blocks, masterfully covered later on in their lives. It confirms our claim that they were a conservation effort, vindicating our claims of immense age and revealing academia's ignorance to not only be deliberate, but possibly conspiratorial. As technology has advanced, it has allowed for many theories to be tested on computer programs, by testing real-world tensions and stresses, allowing us to weed out the ideas that would have been simply impossible. The most interesting outcome of this so far is undoubtedly the theories surrounding cracks in the weight-bearing blocks in the Grand Gallery. Computer simulation has shown that these blocks easily withstand the weight above, so to have cracked at some time in history, a substantial additional weight was added. And although many of these same academics are now convinced that this was some form of counterweight, we know that these enormous, presumed weight-bearing blocks are not the only ones to be found within the structures. These enormous stones have rendered many theories regarding the original build as incomplete. However, there exists a theory which seemingly fits not only for the placement of the casing stones, but also the mysterious semi-crushed Grand Gallery. Khufu's ship, a vessel we have covered in the past, found masterfully dismantled and placed in order of its construction at the base of the Grand Pyramid, has been found to possess some intriguing features. Author and researcher Itzvan Soros puts forward this highly compelling hypothesis concerning the many unusual characteristics of the Khufu ship, and indeed their connection to the movement and placement of the casing stones which we see today. This theory involves the flooding of the Nile to accomplish these placements. This would explain the unimaginably immense weight that the pyramids clearly once experienced, and the cracks within the gallery blocks. Itzvan goes into detail, explaining that much of the boat could have been repaired and replaced at ease, and most interestingly, that it could be deliberately flooded at will. Even recognizing and explaining their unusual docking stations, found all along the shores of Sakura. Did the Khufu ship really have something to do with the conservation stones found upon the great monuments? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Although academia would like you to believe they possess a detailed, complete history regarding the construction of Easter Island, just like any other seemingly impossible site found around the world, any explanation as to how these supposedly documented events were indeed undertaken remains absent. We recently postulated that much of the ancient ruin that is Easter Island and perhaps the most impressive features still to be found upon the island, are more than likely buried beneath past landslides once caused by rapid deforestation. And, as predicted, 
with this realized and archaeological excavations commenced, we soon knew just how deep this ancient sediment actually is. And as such, the controversial discoveries began to surface. Not only are there ancient Moai statues, stretching into the hundreds of tons of weight dotting the island, but how these were moved into position is knowledge lost to the chasm of history. However, although academia would like you to believe that these tasks were completed within the last thousand years, the evidence of a past advanced civilization actually having been responsible is all over the island. After shallow excavations were undertaken around Anahu, one of the many ancient ceremonial platforms, polygonal masonry, uncannily similar to that found within Giza, Peru, Bolivia, and indeed all other as yet unexplained sites around the world, was indeed unearthed. An additional piece of evidence we feel may one day help to eventually unravel the mystery of not only Easter Island, but many other ancient sites around the world, is in its past title. Once known as the Navel of the World, it is interestingly one of many. A number of other ancient sites, thanks to our own more modern ancestors, retain their ancient titles as navels. Were these ancient civilizations somehow able to tap into a mysterious energy grid that can be found crisscrossing our Earth? It is undeniable that many of the most ancient sites found all over the planet can be found located upon purported ancient energy lines. Were these placements a mere coincidence? Were they placed there for another reason? Or were they indeed tapping into an energy field which allowed them to shift such weights? Chipito Chenua is an intriguing artifact that can be found upon the island. With such an extremely well-preserved, untouched history found upon the island, Chupito Chenua is still remembered as an artifact once used by ancient elders, used to summon something called mana, which interestingly translates as earth energy. These elders then inexplicably use this energy to float multi-ton statues across the coastline, placing them in their final resting places. Are all these connections, artifacts, and historical accounts mere coincidence? Or are we truly on to something? Only time will tell. Alex Putney over at humanresonance.org has, for a number of years now, been unraveling some rather startling secrets. Secrets surrounding Nikola Tesla's free energy technologies and the systematic suppression thereof and seemingly deciphering a number of astounding ancient discoveries, all of which strongly indicating one's highly advanced knowledge of sound waves, resonance, and indeed levitation of extremely large weights. Coined as the, quote, piezoelectric basins by Alex himself, it seems he, along with a number of other researchers' exhaustive efforts, have discovered some compelling and intriguing characteristics of many ancient ruins which litter most of Egypt, dotted along the banks of the Nile. We have, in the past, touched upon the possibility of sound resonance having been a factor in Edward Leedskalen's mysterious and secretive construction of Coral Castle, which can be found within Florida. Many believe that Edward somehow unraveled the secrets to the pyramids, and in doing so, was able to recreate his own rudimentary resonance machine, enabling him to lift enormous weights with relative ease. As our knowledge of our environment and the mysteries of our ancestors deepens, especially regarding their once mystifying and astounding knowledge of construction, left to ruin in many areas of the world, accepted as having never had access to heavy machinery, we must look elsewhere for our answer as to how these weights were moved. An outspoken local wisdom keeper of the Giza Plateau, Egyptologist and tour guide Abdel Hakim Ayan, has brought very controversial but extremely compelling knowledge to bear regarding profound implications of these astounding ancient constructions. Hakim's provocative commentary on the misconceptions of modern academics was broadcast in The Pyramid Code, a documentary produced by Dr. Carmen Bolter 
professor at the University of Calgary, a documentary well worth investigation. It reveals several insights, including the advanced nature of the psychoacoustic and biorhythmic effects of these ancient Sanskrit monuments that he claims have all been falsely attributed to the Egyptian civilization. Part of his testimony is as follows. It must be noted that due to Abdel's intimate knowledge of the Giza Plateau, he should undoubtedly be perceived as a reliable source of avenues for alternative esoteric research. He claims that in 1936, while the Sphinx was still covered up to the neck in sand, there were tunnels he personally explored, claiming that past the Abu Ghraib, a crystal altar was found, containing a round disc in the middle of four radial lines, a symbol of Hotep, Hotep meaning peace and food. This round disc was a lid on a shaft, about 180 feet deep to the level of the ocean where he claims there is still running water, and there is still, quote, much more to be found.